I started the conversation by saying, Bonjour, madame. Someone's walking down the street and you'd say, oh, look at the gaps on him. And the first time someone said to me, I thought, that's, I didn't, like, I, I just really didn't know what it meant. This is a kind of repeated joke you the long weekend knows that there's no point for a successful speak Spanish to anybody. Funnily enough, the first time I heard the East Cork accent wasn't when I moved, it was, uh, you see, I, I'd been going to Ireland for summer holidays for a good few years because my dad is from uh, Kilworth, that kind of area, and uh, we always used to go on holidays to Balancoda in East Cork. So I was familiar with the accent, but there was definitely a huge culture shock when I moved permanently. Uh, a funny thing that really occurred to me was when I started going, I had to go to um, one year of primary school uh, in Ireland because I was too young to move in, on to secondary school. So I had to go to primary school in uh, this rural school, Kilcreden, out in the back arse of nowhere. And uh, the thing that really struck me was I would see these little kids, they're only five, six years old, and they were swearing like troopers. I had never seen anything like it. Like when I went to school in London, I went to like this uh, Roman Catholic school. And if you were caught like doing half a swear, like if you said crap, you would be expelled. And there's no question about it. But I saw these little kids running around effing and blinding and it, it just, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> like it just, it was so bizarre. Uh, when it comes to mannerisms within Ireland, I'm pretty good at taking on the meaning of a word or implying it from its context. That's never been an issue. Although um, I'm very often communicating with, with people abroad, especially people in America. I've met a lot of people um, through web forums and things. So I do, I, I Skype chat with people quite often, especially the Americans. And um, they can get really confused by some of our slang terms. Especially when I say to them, you should visit Ireland sometime, you can stay with me we'll have a bit of crack. Which for me, crack, its primary meaning is a bit of fun. Secondary meaning, a drug I do on the weekends. Um, for Americans, its primary meaning is a drug, and second meaning, there isn't one. Except for you know, a crack in a wall or some such. But um, in the context, it clearly would mean they think it's a drug. So then there's quite a bit of confusion there. Like, I actually um, used the term gatch. I actually heard that term and it's used to, it's like another word for someone's gait, as in like the way they walk. So you say, someone's walking down the street and you'd say, oh, look at the gatch on him. And the first time someone said to me, I thought, that's, I didn't like, I, I just really didn't know what it meant. I was thinking, No, it just wasn't clicking and I actually just had to ask them and they said, oh no, it just means, you know, the way they walk. When people have issues with hearing me, I think speed can be one issue for them. Um, well, I think most people, when they're speaking to somebody, especially over a phone or a like over through a computer, you do tend to speak more slowly because there's other issues involved, like background noise and static on the line and that sort of thing. So, but yeah, I think speed is probably one of the bigger ones, more so than uh, slang, actually. I definitely think the biggest factor uh, in the misunderstandings would be accent because when you're talking in a very sort of thick, accent it's always very hard for someone obviously if you're not familiar with it because they tend to be very uh, yeah what would you say they're very kind of fast and they're very kind of 
melded together, you know, they run, words like run into each other and with the sort of thick accent, you just can't, they just sound so odd and different that you don't recognize them and that's just usually the main um, reason for the misunderstandings. I, I honestly think it's probably the biggest factor, I don't think, uh, even more so than not understanding words, um, you'll always get over that, it's like, oh, I don't know that word then someone will always say, oh yeah, well, I'll tell you what the word means. But when it's in terms of an accent, it's not something you can get over. It's not something that's just instant. I was over in Prague, didn't speak a word of the native, but um, myself and some others um, have been browsing around for the day. And whilst there, I picked up this hat. It was a very Soviet hat. And I wasn't actually particularly sure of um, the history of the country and their relation to the Soviets at this point in the feelings of it. So I was just wearing it because it amused me. But we had to, we'd get this um, train. And while we were getting onto the train, there was this guy standing just inside the door. Big guy, really tight hair, bomber jacket kind of intimidating appearance and um, so I'm walking in with this hat on my head, Soviet symbol, the hammer and sickle and uh, he looks at me and he kind of points to the hat and says something, no idea what it was but um, I just got this feeling, whatever way he did it, I got this feeling that he was like security or something or someone warning me not to wear it or take it off so I they caught it and took it off and just kind of gave him a nod and walked past. So uh, myself and the others, we walked down to one of the little cabins and we're sitting down for a while. And sure enough, this guy turns up and he's looking at me and he's saying something and he's pointing around the place and I have no clue what's going on at all. And eventually um, one of the people with me, she tells me that um, she thinks he wants me to go with him. I really don't want to go anywhere with this guy. He looks really dangerous. But peer pressure, I suppose, got the better of me. So I stood up and went with him. And um, suddenly he takes out this phone, the camera phone. And I'm thinking, okay, he wants a picture of some kind. So he leads me down to the far end of the train. And we're standing there where there's nobody in sight, which didn't help the intimidating um, uh, feeling of the moment and he's pointing the phone at me. And even at this time, I mean, he's kind of smiling at this point and he's holding up his phone to me. I'm thinking, he wants to take a photograph of me and then kick the crap out of me so he'll have a before and after photo of this foreign prat in the Soviet hat. Sure enough, he takes the photograph, says something that I think might have been thank you or something, and um, then I try and make some gestures to him that um, does he want to put on the hat and I'll take a photo which he appears to understand and he agreed with so um, he puts on the hat and I took a photo for him and at that point then I think I kind of had the feeling that this was a safe situation he wasn't out to kill me it was just whatever way he was speaking to me and I think just kind of the general settings had made it kind of scary for me but he ended up, we ended up shaking hands and I went off back to my seat and he passed by a few more times afterwards and gave me a thumbs up each time. So, um, yeah, it ended up being okay, but it was really scary for a few minutes. You have these situations where you think, you know, you're being understood all the way along and next thing, like, they have no clue of what you've said, but it's always that sort of polite thing. I think politeness is a big factor in these sort of misunderstandings for language and that sort of thing. I used to work in a maternity hospital for a summer and on one of two occasions actually there was um, um, issues where um, a patient or a patient's relatives didn't didn't speak um, English or a high standard of English. So there was confusion there but one time in particular um, I was approaching the the, uh, the entrance the entrance facility and there was a nurse speaking with two French people um, a French woman was trying to communicate with the nurse that she was looking for her daughter but with her accent and her broken English daughter the way she was saying it sounded like doctor
which certainly to a nurse is a word that they'd hear pretty often as an often question for them. So while they're looking for their daughter, who was a patient in this maternity hospital, the nurse thought they're looking for a doctor, which also led to a name confusion because she didn't know of any doctors by the names that they had. Now I was just out of secondary school at that point and spent the last six years doing French. So luckily I had just, just a smattering enough of French that I, I was able to resolve the situation. I kind of overheard when I walked up and um, I just asked, Le fille, which means daughter, and then we oui, oui. we, like, ah, and then I explained to the nurse, and then we were able to resolve it quickly enough. Um, that situation for me was was very much pride. Two reasons: one, because I helped some people out; second, because I got a one up on the nurses. That's just an internal war that was going on, nurses and porters. But um, yeah, that was one situation, and it, it came up a couple of times in there. But then there's other situations when you don't want to ask them to repeat themselves because you're doing it every five minutes, and you're saying, well can't keep bothering this person and then like it's the politeness kicking in again and you're just like just it gets to a stage where you're just like okay I've asked this person three times to repeat themselves I still don't know what they're saying so you just kind of nod and smile and you just hope that like the situation progresses without your input. <laughs> there was another situation when I was in Spain for a long weekend visiting a friend um, so I picked up a one of these uh, language travel guides. You know, it had all the phrases for speaking Spanish, uh, the common ones. So I'd been looking at that a couple of weeks beforehand and on the plane on the way over. And I eventually arrived and I had to get a train from just outside the airport to a nearby town. Which I, I had no idea where the train station was from there, but I knew it was very close. So I walked up to this information desk where I thought, if anybody is going to speak English, they'll have somebody on the information desk. Um, but regardless, I got up my, my guide and I found a thing for um, where is the train station. And I was looking at it and I was examining it in my head and I was, I was looking up on a greeting so I could go up and say hello and get their attention. So there I was, I walked up, uh, feeling pretty confident. I'd just spent you know, time looking at this, I was prepared. I walked up to these, there was three Spanish girls behind the table. And um, I started the conversation by saying, Bonjour, madame. Which, um, of course, is French. So they looked at me stupid. I looked stupid. And um, eventually, I started floundering a bit. And um, a security guard nearby, who just happened to speak a small amount of English, um, said to me, train? I was like, train, yes. And uh, he managed to point me in the direction, and I got there in the end. This is a kind of repeated thing throughout the, the long weekend I was there. At no point did I successfully speak Spanish to anybody, despite having put so much effort into preparing myself. I went to restaurants and got it wrong, fast food places, uh, spoke to some locals, shopkeepers, every single time something went wrong. The only time speaking Spanish for me went right was when I was leaving. Um, I had I'd gone through, I was I'd gone through, I was in the airport and I was, was waiting to go, I, an hour to wait I think, so I decided to get some food. So there I was and um, they had this restaurant in there and I saw, um, they actually had, they had, what was up there, and I saw they had, um, uh, I think it was chips and something else, but I think the, the Spanish part was a uh, Rita and I can't recall offhand actually, but I walked up and I looked, saw it up there and I was like, oh yeah, that's it. And I asked for it and one looks at me and she says to me, chips, are you looking for chips? I was like, yes, I'm looking for chips. So the one time I got Spanish right in this entire long weekend of mistakes, um, it was somebody who was English. <laughs>